five past eight. Good morning. Just take a moment, if you would, to listen to this. Well, I've never met anybody else since I met David because I have trust issues. I've lost most of my friends. I've, I've just become a loner. I was groomed by him because I had, before the, the first meeting, hours and hours of phone calls. He loved me, wanted to marry me. They're just two of up to 30 women believed to have been conned by David King, the Deputy Mayor of Workington, who has twice been jailed for scamming women out of tens of thousands of pounds. In 2006, he was sent to prison after conning women into thinking he was in love with them and was going to marry them, and then scamming them into investing in a book he was writing. He says he's a changed man, but as you and Muri discovered in his exclusive report for BBC Radio Cumbria, Women who say they were conned by him simply don't believe it. Ewan joins me in the studio now. Ewan, morning again. Just remind us what happened here. Well, King was jailed in 2006 after swindling thousands from Christian women he met through internet dating sites. Court reports at the time say he promised them love and marriage before asking them for thousands of pounds to be invested in this religious book that he said he was writing about St John the Divine. It was, in fact, a real book, but it was published by him and it never made a profit. Well, this scam was exposed by BBC Watchdog at the time, which led to his conviction. And then after his release, he moved to West Cumbria and got involved with local politics. But since becoming deputy mayor, his criminal past has been thrust back into the spotlight. And that's because there was an article last year where he said he was a changed man who'd pay back every penny. That's true, he did say that, uh, and it was in an article on the BBC News website. But the reality is, Mike, he's paid uh, a limited amount of compensation, and just two women were involved in the court case, but it's believed up to 30 may have been targeted. One of them was Susan Ghosh in Batley. She's still £2,500 out of pocket. Now, she spotted this article on the BBC News website, and in her first ever broadcast interview... She told me about how he got her to invest in this book during their second date. By this time, he loved me, wanted to marry me. He, he uh, wanted me to invest two and a half thousand and he was giving me this certificate. He made it out as though it was a great privilege to be one of the investors because this book was going to make so much money. And I was groomed by him because I had, before the, the first meeting, hours and hours of phone calls. He, he just couldn't stop phoning me. How did it feel to have so much attention heaped on you by this man who seemed quite uh, important, quite intelligent? Oh, I, I, I was really falling for him before I ever met him. I, I can't understand myself now as how I was so taken in by him. He was very charming. He, he did have charisma. Even though he was grossly overweight, he, he was very attractive. He, he was this good Christian man. How did you feel after you gave him money? Well, I was slightly apprehensive. I, I didn't think my bank account would take two and a half thousand so I said, well, I'll give you a £1,000 and the rest I'll give you some months later. Mm. And I gave him the cheque for a £1,000 and he said to me, look, just give me the other cheque without the writing on it. I put the signature and it just in good faith. And the terrible thing was a week later I realised he'd filled in the second cheque and my account was emptied. And he, he never gave me that cheque back. And uh, he, he was always going to. He, he always had so many excuses. He, he, could, he, he could get you to believe anything. And the relationship carried on. And then I saw the Watchdog programme my 
son one day just rang. He said, turn on BBC One and watch quick, Mum. Turn it on. And uh, I I saw it and I was just frozen to the chair when I saw it. I, I was shocked. It, it was shock. And the following day, he phoned me in the morning and he knew it had been on and he was edging round, oh, what were you doing last night? Uh, and uh, I said, I did see the programme. I said, and you're conning women. I said, oh, well, I want my money back. But he didn't appear guilty on the phone. And you mentioned that after the Watchdog programme, you, you continued to stay in touch. Were you still under his spell at all? No, at uh, no but I still had... A sort of affection for him. Did you tell the police what happened to you? Oh, yeah. oh yes, they knew all the details. Uh, mm. of, and they said, do you want to make a formal complaint? I just said I'd rather not. So I, I, didn't, do, I didn't go to court. What stopped you wanting to be part of that? <laughs> I suppose it's the Christian thing. I, 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 I didn't want to make a formal complaint when there was two other women. If if there hadn't been the other two women and I knew that they were trying to get other women before they could take him to court, I would have made that complaint. You didn't speak to him while he was in jail. Then he came out and you tried to get in touch to get your money back, mm. but nobody would tell you where he was. No. So effectively, you couldn't get in touch with no. him, even no, if you that, wanted to. that was it. So more than a decade later, you find this article on the BBC website uh-huh. which tells you he's Deputy Mayor of Workington and he says he's a changed man and he's paid back every penny. What? How did you feel at that point? I, I, I was furious. I literally felt my blood pressure go up. I was angry. What would you say to him if he was listening now? Uh, David King, if you are a Christian, do the right thing. And if you care as a Christian, about your soul, pay back your victims, you should stand down so we can all get closure on this. Susan Ghosh in Batley, speaking to BBC Radio Cumbria's Ewan Murray. Ewan is still with me. Ewan, as Susan said there, David King is still the Deputy Mayor of Workington. He represents the people of the town at Civic Engagements. What does he have to say about all of this? Well, Mike, he says he is seriously ill at the moment. However, uh, you're correct, he does still hold his position as the Deputy Mayor of Workington. Um, After I told him about these allegations, he agreed to meet me at his home this week. Now, he denies owing Susan any money because he says that she invested it into his company and not into him personally. So he's making that distinction. I asked him why he allowed her to invest in this book, which was never going to make a profit. That's not true. The fact is, I had already published many books under King Lion Publishing. So how much money has Susan Gosh made from her shares in the Revelation if it's made a profit? I didn't say it had made a profit. I said it potentially could have made a profit. You pled guilty to four charges of obtaining money by deception from two other women in relation to this same book. Why should we accept Susan's investment was different? No. At the time, I pled guilty simply because I was told by my defence counsel that if I put these women through cross-examination, etc., etc., I would probably receive a, a higher sentence. Susan alleges that she gave you two cheques for her shares, one for £1,000 and a signed blank one. She says that without her consent, the blank one was cashed in to the tune of £1,500. What's your response? She had given me a signed cheque for the value of £1,500 that was not dated. I gave both cheques in to the office and they were then cashed by the Office of King Lion Publishing. I had no control over those cheques. They weren't made out to me. Do you accept that you've ever owed any money to Susan Gosh? No. We've seen a series of emails between you and Susan where you acknowledge money was owed to her and tried to negotiate payment plans. Why would you do that if you've never owed money to her? I didn't know at that particular time that I was going to be asked to step down from King Lion Publishing. 
you took the checks on behalf of King Line, which was your company, for a book that you say you wrote. Can you see why she would hold you responsible for the money? No, I don't. Will you ever pay her back? I don't owe her any money. She believes that she was in a loving relationship with you and that you were going to marry her. The word marriage was never in my lips. I never once said that. When you were seeing Susan, how many other women were you seeing at the same time? I saw Susan Ghosh from about November to f February, March 2004, 5 or 3, 4. So roughly how many women were you seeing at the same time? Actually seeing? Yes. At the same time as when she believed that you were engaged? I think at the time I was seeing two other women. I, by the way... Did they all know about each other? Well, they all knew that I was dating via the internet. Knowing that all of this was in the background, you injected yourself into public life. Can you see how that would cause your victims more hurt and distress? I put myself into public life in a very low manner, which was nowhere near where either of them lived. Would it have been more considerate to go away and lead a quiet life so your victims would never have to hear your name again? Well, as far as I was concerned, they wouldn't have heard my name again. Knowing how distressed Susan and Anthea are, is it not now time to stand down? Why should I stand down? I have no reason whatsoever to stand down. I'm a decent, law-abiding citizen who is working to the best of my ability for the people I represent. Now, it wasn't just Susan Ghosh that I spoke to. I actually heard from three women who are still out of pocket. One of them was Anthea Major, who you will have heard me mention in that interview. She gave King £1,800 but was only repaid 900 When I told Anthea that David said he didn't believe he still owed money to her, Susan Ghosh or the third woman, she was just incredulous. Would the three of us be fighting our corner if we've been paid i am telling the truth and susan is telling the truth and so is monica david king has not paid us back and he does not deserve to be deputy mayor of workington and i also think he should retract this article his statement of saying that he's paid everybody back because he he hasn't he knows he hasn't that's BBC Radio Cumbria's Ewan Murray bringing us his exclusive report. Now more than a